Good morning, side friends. It's the Midget Man coming at you again from Walker's Music with yet another word for the day. Yes, friends, it's Tuesday morning edition, and uh, Midget Man, give God all the praise. We're giving him all the honor for life, health, and strength. And we thank him for as well as it is. And we also thank each and every one of you, cyber friends. You know who you are. And as the title of my video this morning, it says, No Need to Fear Armageddon. No need to fear Armageddon. Uh, as usual, people, every morning I do my daily devotion as I get myself prepared for my day and get myself in tune, my spirit in tune with the Father. And I was looking at some different programs this morning. And I happened to run across uh, Jack Benipi and uh, his program. And uh, matter of fact, Dr. Jack, he's in the hospital at this time, and uh, he's recuperating. His wife, Greg Zeller, has said he was doing very well, and that they expect him to be back and back at the job very, very, very soon. And I also saw you know, Dr. Carl Ball. He's the one that's the founder of the Creation Center. In other words, you know, about the proofs of the Bible existence according to creation. And Dr. Carl Ball is one of our very, very well known scientists and respected scientists and physicists of our time. And they were speaking on and talking about the, 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 the uh, relations right now with America and Iran and how that our, our, our present. Uh, our present uh, uh, government is uh, how they are handling that situation in negotiations with Iran, with as far as the nuclear deals and everything, and how it's a very, very bad threat to Israel. But I'm here to tell y'all now, many men do not claim to be no expert in uh, foreign relationships and everything like that. In our present administration, upon the President Obama. John Kerry, we, uh, I don't claim to be no expert in that because, like I say, political science was not my major in college, and music and business were my major, and uh, I, am, I don't claim to be no expert in, in political science, but I do know one thing, I can read, and uh, I will say this much, uh, and I, I'm a very, very, I, 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 I very love Israel very much, the nation, the people. Because people that they are the people of the book, in other words, and uh, God is going to take care of Israel. And I say to uh, my my champion, I call Benjamin Netanyahu my champion. I like Benjamin yet I love Benjamin Netanyahu for what he stands for. And I, I also that in the statement he made in one of his addresses, I believe it was to the UN not too long ago. He said, "Never again, never again." In other words, they will not be uprooted out of their land, never again. And so I am here to say to everyone, and I sit here in total relaxation, because even though a lot of stuff is happening on our world scene, but I'm here to tell you that, believe it, God is not worried at all. And we shouldn't be worried at all. God has everything in his hand. He is going to take care of Israel. Israel do not have the word. Uh, everybody talking about Armageddon, Armageddon people. Armageddon is nothing but Jesus is going to come and stop the one that are hurting the earth. Those nations, and if you reach a Bible, all of them Islamic, they're going to be coming against the nation of Israel to wipe them out. Jesus just going to, it ain't, why do I tell you you don't have to worry about Armageddon? There's not going to be no fight. How can you fight against Christ? Only thing Christ is going to do is say, Phew. And they're gonna be gone. So in other words, you should be you should you should really be ready for Armageddon to come so Jesus can come, set up his kingdom, and rule in this world for one thousand years, that's according to the Bible. Now I'm gonna tell y'all something. I've said this more times than one. There are two major conflicts in the Bible that it speaks of, and I don't know I'm not gonna to try to get into an explanation of them. I've done it more times than I can can remember. And I've told everybody about Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38 and 39. Those are two different conflicts. And I know a lot of Bible quote-unquote people want to put 38 and 39 before Psalm 83. But you can't do that if you know how to read. 
if you can read and comprehend what you read, you can clearly see that that Psalm 83 conflict must come before 38 and 39. Why? Because in the conflict of 38 and 39, it said they come against Israel while Israel is uh, dwelling in peace and in comfort. Well, people, if you notice anything, look at Israel today. Israel is not dealing in peace and in comfort right now. They got walls everywhere. They got walls everywhere. But now if you read again in Psalm 83 about that conflict where one third of the world population is going to be destroyed, going to die in that conflict. All those nations on that are uh, what we call the Euphrates. That ain't, the four angels are going to be loose. And it's going to cause mass destruction. These, these conflicts with all of the Arab nations around and bordering Israel is going to attack. This is why, and Israel going to Israel going to defeat all of them, and their territory is going to be expanded. The territory of Israel is going to be expanded. This is when they're going to be dwelling safety without wall. So the Ezekiel 38 and 39 will come after Psalm 83, sometime in the future, in which I believe is just my belief because I've read it. It's going to be, I believe, after the millennial reign of Christ. If you notice that Satan is bound 1,000 years during Christ's millennial reign, then he's set free at the end of it. And he goes out to the four corners of the world to gather together people to come in against the city of God again. He, come, he comes and get enough people to come against the city again, and they say God stopped them on the mountain of Israel with fire, hailstone, and brimstone. So people, that is, that is exactly what it says in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So it I believe the Ezekiel 38, 39, the God may God conflict will be after the millennial reign of Christ. Because I've read it. Now if I read it wrong, then God helped me and I'll come back and I'll tell y'all I made a mistake. But so far I haven't gotten that confirmation that I'm wrong. And the reason another reason I'm gonna give you why I say it's right. Because let me tell y'all something. During the millennial reign, only the Christians the one that have been the dead in Christ shall rise. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up with them. We are going to be ruling with Christ. We are the only ones that are going to have immortality. The rest of the people that are living here on this planet at the time, and believe it, there are going to be people that's going to still be mortal here, that's going to live during the, during the millennial reign. And they're going to have kids. These kids are going to have the same free will that all the rest of the kids throughout the history of the world have had. God gave all human beings free will. And believe it or not, even after a 1,000-year rule, 1, rule of perfect peace, and people are going to see the perfectness, perfectness of Jesus and the goodness of Jesus, yet and still, with free will, Satan, after he's released from his prison, going to still be able. To go out in the four corners, those, those kids that were born during the millennium, they got free choice. They're going to choose to follow Satan. Ain't that something? They're going to choose to follow Satan after a 1,000 year old reign of Christ with perfect peace. they still going to follow Satan. And then God's going to bring all that to an abrupt end with fire and brimstone. He's going to destroy them all on the mountains of Israel coming against the holy city. And then that will usher in eternity. This is what I read, and, and people, God has not given me anything yet differently. So I urge every one of you, read your Bible, study it. Don't just read it, study it. It's there as plain as day. Don't get the conflict mixed up. you got Psalm 83 that's going to happen, I believe, very, very soon. Then you got Armageddon. Armageddon is going to usher in Christ. Because Christ is going to stop those that are coming against Israel. He just going to say... And they're going to be gone. There ain't going to be no real battle. They're going to be, it's going to be over just like that. Then I believe, like I said, I've read it. May God and God war, 38 and 39 in Ezekiel. I believe that conflict comes after the millennium. When Satan is released and he goes and gets the rest of China and Russia and all the rest. The ones that are born during the millennium. Because like I said, the immortals going to be here during the millennium. Now, Christians... Those that are dead in Christ are going to be raised from and corrupt and not uncorruptible. They, those are loved ones that are going on. They're going to be in this here new millennium. But we are going to be immortal because Jesus will be, have changed us. 
we are going to be immortal. But there are going to be mortals here as well. And it's after this that Satan will be loose. And he's going to be able to gather up enough people to come against the city of God. And that's when God's going to destroy them with the fire and brimstone. Read Ezekiel 38 and 39 very carefully. And I'm quite sure you'll see just what I'm, I'm talking about and trying to explain. It's hard to do it in these here few minutes on these videos. This is how I come out say I urge you with y'all to kind of get with me on the Bible study if you can. If not, just check the videos out. And I'll check the recordings out. I don't know, I understand that people don't have a whole lot of time, especially in this fast-paced society we're living in now. But I urge you people that you need to take time out and spend time with God. Learn His Word. Look at what He said in the Word, and then you can have the peace of God. I mean it, people. Many man, and I mean this with all my heart, I am at total peace. I'm not worried about what's going on in this world. I know it's got to happen, but I know who holds tomorrow. See, in other words, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I do know who holds tomorrow. And the same one who holds tomorrow is the same one that holds me. And he holds you if you belong to him. This is many man saying, whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God is not in it, it's best that you come out of it. Until another Bible study tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lord willing, we will have our Bible study tonight. So with that being said, be blessed and goodbye.